If you're the typical guy in the gym working with weights, not only do you want to lose some fat, but also gain some muscle. In this video, we will discuss the mechanisms of how muscles grow, plus why most women won't gain large amounts of muscle when working with weights. Before starting, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more future updates. So let's start. We will only discuss skeletal muscles, despite the fact that there are other types of muscles, such as heart muscle, that are relevant to our issues. The fundamental building blocks of muscle contraction in skeletal muscle are the thread-like myofibrils and sarcomeres that make up a muscle fiber. Motor neurons send messages to the 650 skeletal muscles in the human body that cause them to contract. These impulses are initiated by the sarcoplasmic reticulum, a component of the cell. Your muscles are signaled to contract by motor neurons, and the better you grow at receiving those signals, the stronger you can become. The Physiology of Muscle Growth After a workout, your body fuses together broken muscle fibers to create new muscle protein strands, or myofibrils, as a means of replacing or repairing the damaged fibers. Muscle hypertrophy is brought on by the thickening and proliferation of these repaired myofibrils. When the rate of muscle protein synthesis exceeds the rate of muscle protein breakdown, muscular development occurs. However, this adaptation does not take place whilst you are really lifting the weights. Instead, it happens when you're sleeping. So, how can you truly give your muscle cells more muscle? Here, satellite cells step in and function as muscle stem cells. They immediately contribute to the formation of myofibrils when they are activated because they aid in the addition of additional nuclei to the muscle cells. The ability of some, genetic freaks, to develop large muscles may depend on activating these satellite cells, whilst other individuals may be considered, hard gainers. Researchers found that people who were, extreme responders, to muscle growth, with an amazing 58% myofiber hypertrophy from an exercise, had 23% activation of their satellite cells in one of the most fascinating studies of the past five years. With a 28% expansion and a 19% activation of their satellite cells, modest responders exhibited a modest response. It's noteworthy to note, however, that certain participants in the study who were referred to as non-responders experienced 0% growth and 0% activation of their satellite cells at the same time. The more you can activate these satellite cells, it would appear, the more you'll be able to grow. How might these satellite cells be activated to promote muscle growth, then, becomes the question. Three mechanisms that make muscles grow. The capacity to consistently increase the amount of stress on the muscles underlies all progression of natural muscular growth. This stress causes your body's homeostasis to become disturbed and is a key factor in the growth of a muscle. There are three basic processes that promote muscle development in response to stress and the ensuing disruption of homeostasis. Number 1. Muscle Tension. You must apply a load of stress that is larger than what your body or muscles have previously adapted to in order to induce muscle growth. Why do you do this? Lifting progressively bigger weights is the primary method. This added strain on the muscle aids in chemical changes that enable the release of growth factors including MTOR activation and satellite cell activation. The relationship between the motor units and the muscle cells is also most significantly impacted by muscular stress. Why some people can be stronger but not as big as others is explained by two additional reasons. Number 2. Muscle Damage. You have likely felt the effects of exercising related localized muscle injury if you have ever felt sore after a workout. Localized muscle damage results in the release of immune system cells and inflammatory chemicals, which prompts satellite cells to become active. This doesn't imply that you need to be hurting for it to happen. Rather, it only means that your muscle cells need to show signs of the workout's damage. Usually, additional systems work to reduce pain over time. Number 3. Metabolic Stress. The impacts of metabolic stress can be felt if you have ever experienced the burn from an exercise or the pump at the gym. When bodybuilders claimed that the pump made their muscles bigger, scientists used to doubt them. It appears they were on to something after more examination. In the vicinity of the muscle, metabolic stress promotes cell swelling, which aids in muscle growth without necessarily enlarging the size of the muscle cells. This results from the accumulation of muscle glycogen, which contributes to the swelling of the muscle and the development of connective tissue. Sarcoplasmic hypertrophy is a type of growth that allows people to appear to have larger muscles without actually being stronger. The next question is, how do hormones impact muscle growth now that you are aware of the three primary pathways of muscle growth? How do hormones affect how muscles grow? Because they control the activity of satellite cells, 
hormones are another factor that is significantly responsible for muscle growth and repair. The two most important factors that encourage muscle growth are insulin growth factor 1, in particular mecho growth factor, and testosterone. When lifting weights, most people focus on the hormone testosterone, and there seems to be some truth to the notion that testosterone boosts protein synthesis. Prevents protein breakdown, activates satellite cells, and incites the production of other anabolic hormones. Strength training appears to help not only release more testosterone but also make the receptors of your muscle cells more responsive to your free testosterone. Despite the fact that the majority of testosterone is bound in the body and hence not available for usage. By increasing the amount of neurotransmitters at the site of the damaged fiber, testosterone can also trigger growth hormone responses, which can assist to activate tissue growth. By promoting protein synthesis, boosting glucose uptake, redistributing the uptake of amino acids into skeletal muscles. And, once more, activating satellite cells to increase muscle growth, the IGF controls the rate of muscle mass growth. Why muscles need rest to grow? You may actually reverse the anabolic process and send your body into a catabolic or destructive state if you do not give it enough rest or nutrition. Since the reaction of muscle protein metabolism to a resistance exercise session lasts for 24 to 48 hours, the effect of the diet on muscular growth will depend on how protein metabolism interacts with any meals ingested during this time. Keep in mind that depending on your gender, age, and genetics, your muscles can only grow so much. For example, men have higher levels of testosterone than women, which enables them to develop larger and more powerful muscles. Why rapid muscle growth is unlikely? The majority of people experience relatively moderate muscle hypertrophy over time. Since the majority of early changes are brought on by your nervous system's capacity to stimulate your muscles, people typically do not notice noticeable growth for several weeks or months. Additionally, because everyone's genetic makeup varies, the amount and type of muscle fibers as well as the activation of satellite cells can all affect how much muscle can be grown. Muscle protein synthesis must outpace muscle protein breakdown in order to ensure that you're making every effort to gain muscle. This necessitates that you consume enough protein and carbohydrates to aid in the cellular process of regenerating torn down muscle tissue. Understanding the physics behind how muscles truly grow is crucial since it may be tremendously motivating to see visible muscle growth and obvious physical changes in your body's muscle structure. In conclusion, in order for muscle growth and breakdown to take place, a stress level that is higher than the one your body has previously adapted to must be created. This can be accomplished by using heavier weights, switching up your workouts frequently to inflict more overall muscle fiber damage, and working your muscles until they are exhausted and pumped. The most crucial phase of the workout is over, and it involves getting enough rest and fueling your muscles enough so they can repair and grow. This is it for today's video. What do you think of our video? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more future updates. Thanks for watching.